And uh, so we're hoping in the future we can take that knowledge that we got from tournament number one and apply it to a second tournament and make it as much better as we can as that was kind of our first little baby raising it up so we're going to move on to our second child hopefully and hopefully it'll be a little bit better it was quite a good first child to have uh it was a very entertaining tournament and i understand uh there were many difficulties to sort out and all that but uh, you still managed to pull it all together and create some uh, quite fantastic games for everybody to watch so uh GG to that, and uh, we're looking forward to... Oh yeah, one more one more thing really quick. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but one more thing is that me and HD, we ran that entire tournament by ourselves, and so it everything took a lot longer than a normal tournament. Uh, well, I shouldn't say normal tournament, because our tournament was a normal tournament, but other tournaments, they tend to just fly right through and be done and over with, and they move on to the next one. But uh, we ran that one completely by ourselves. We had to do everything, which it's a lot of work. It's a lot more than it sounds like. And also, part of the reason that the tournament was drawn out for so long is that we wanted the players to get a lot of practice so if you think of the the star leagues in korea between or different rounds they have several weeks if not longer to practice and uh, so we kind of wanted something similar to that instead of if if we were to do it all in like one week then the people wouldn't be able to practice for each matchup and we think that it, it created a higher level of games i mean the finals and semifinals were like mind-blowingly awesome so i think that that did pay off and uh, yeah, so that that's all I had to say about that. Well, it did pay off. It would uh, certainly seem like. And if any viewer and listener out there have not watched uh, the HDH Invitational Games and certainly the final and semi-final, you totally should go to Husky and HD's channels and do so. Uh, however, moving on to the present and the beta, uh, it's drawing to a close. And we are less than two months away from the official retail release of StarCraft II. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've had a couple of months of trying out the game, seeing what it's like, seeing its pros and cons. And uh, you certainly have observed, played, and um, commentated it thoroughly. Is it the eSport that will make uh, well eSport a household name in uh, sort of mainstream entertainment perhaps that's taking it a bit far but is it the title that will make it all come together eventually is it good enough at the core well it depends what part of it you look at if you look at the gameplay the watchability the fun of it the diversity of builds like if you look at the actual game then i have no doubt that it can easily be the most popular esport um, we've ever seen. I don't know if it'll be as big as Brood War is in Korea as it will be like outside of Korea. I, I probably said that wrong, but I, I think it'll be a lot bigger than anything we've ever seen outside of Korea. And that's just based on the gameplay because, I mean, sure, there's a couple little balance issues and there's a couple... Um, there's a couple minor things about it that they really need to change for the actual gameplay, but it's such small stuff that considering the game's only a couple of months old, the I mean, they can change it no problem down the road. But if you look at the Battle.net aspect, I think that Battle.net needs a lot of work. As far as I know, even major tournaments, so say there was a $50,000 Blizzard-sponsored tournament, or Blizzard-backed, I should say, they still have to connect to the Blizzard servers, and so there's a couple of a couple of really big downsides to that. Number one is that any amount of ping at all in StarCraft II, or well, in StarCraft in general, is so detrimental to the quality of the games because if you're trying to micro around hellions against you know speedlings it really comes down to like the microseconds that you have to get everything exactly right and so if there's ping in there at all if it's more than like 20 or 50 like 20 20 to 50 ping if it's above that then it you really start to notice it at the super high levels and then also if the servers go down i mean you have say you have 20,000 fans there and the servers go down then that's 20,000 really bored uh, fans so i'm really curious to see how they how they work around that i have heard some talk that blizzard will if there's a huge event like that they'll they have to get in contact with Blizzard, and Blizzard will say, okay, we won't take the servers down. So if LAN is not an option, which I absolutely think it should be, then uh, then at least being in contact with Blizzard, as long as they're willing to do their, their maintenance schedule around those big events, then I could definitely see a potential for, uh, for it to become a huge esport. But ping is a huge issue. Um, we, we had some people complaining in our tournament about ping, and they're playing on the same battle net that... 
they're going to be holding these tournaments on. So I'm really curious to see. But I do have faith in Blizzard, like, pulling it together and getting their act straight and just making a one kick-ass game. Yeah, well, I think they do deserve the benefit of a doubt until the game is released and uh, they c- they can offer their solution to the problem. But there's been a lot of controversy and not everybody watching this will be reading all the forum threads and everything. They might not be familiar with all of the latest, but you made a quite infamous Kitty video where you really uh, <laughs> extend upon these issues. Uh, so... For anyone who's interested in the latest uproar, do check that out. There's also cute, cute kittens there. But um, a part of the problem is, of course, that there is no inbuilt LAN support. There are no plans for chat rooms in Battle.net and a whole other series of issues uh, that could be detrimental because they seem to go against what the community wants. But um, Yeah, um, uh, it's, it's, it's good that you mentioned that because Blizzard has constantly said they want this game to be more compu- uh, community-oriented than any of their other games. Maybe maybe WoW would be hard to beat because that's a pretty big community game. But uh, they want it to be a super community game. And when you So say, because like me, I have probably 150 friends who play StarCraft. That's not the average person. The average person maybe has one or two friends at most, if any, who play StarCraft. And so when they log in totally to nice. Battle.net, yeah, you're staring at a login screen and a ladder, and you don't have anyone to talk to. Yeah, the only people you can talk to are your Facebook friends, cool, and your your real-life friends that have the game. And so as far as community goes, you the only way that I, I'm... The only way that I know of that they're going to have chat rooms is for your clan. But it's like, how are you supposed to find a clan if you can't even get in a chat room with them like beforehand? So it's I, I think that they may have been just a little disconnected on how important chat rooms are because um, the way they were sounding, like it, it's kind of hard to see their exact stance because it seems like it's different from day to day. But it, it seems like they were just disconnected and it wasn't really a priority to them. Not necessarily that they want to, you know, make people mad or anything. But chat rooms, I mean, you can't have a community without being able to talk to people. That's like a community of mimes. It's pretty pretty boring. And uh, so I don't know. I, I think that they will come around and they'll realize, hey, we've had chat rooms in every single one of our multiplayer games. I mean, from Diablo, Diablo 1 even had chat rooms. And Warcraft 2, Battle.net and yeah, all that well. stuff have chat rooms. So, yeah, so I, I think they'll come around. I just think they're kind of a little slow getting there. Yeah, and this is something that I wanted to bring up. I mean, historically, Blizzard has always provided us with great games, uh, Warcraft, Starcraft, mm-hmm. Diablo, others, uh, but their matchmaking services and sort of the out-of-game uh, experience have more often than not been less than great, but especially in case of StarCraft, the community has always provided a very thorough solution for that. I mean, even in the mm-hmm. late 90s, uh, uh, I remember we played at something called Kali, uh, or Kali, uh, which was a non blistered authorized ge- matchmaking service. Difficult to say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was PG Tour, which turned into IC Cup, which was the place to play StarCraft competitively, Korean, foreign, everybody. And uh, right, right. I mean, that's probably in one way or another goes against the license agreement uh, that comes with StarCraft Two, and I'm not saying that should be the case. But still, the community has always been the one providing solutions for the surrounding problems. And is it uh, well completely wrong to say that if this would be a problem, uh, that would also be the solution, like in the good? Yeah, the, as far as. As far as the the custom or the the private matchmaking stuff, I should say, it seems like Blizzard has acknowledged that stuff, like iCup and all the other mm-hmm. previous ones. And I think they want, I think they've actually learned from that, and they want to try and build something so they have, people have no reason to you know make a crack server. And um, so I, I think that's good on on Blizzard's part to actually try and make a good matchmaking system. And one other thing I want to say was I've been following the Blizzard matchmaking system for like. 12 years since StarCraft came out. The St- StarCraft 1 has no matchmaking system. You just join a game and whoever joins it, that's who you play. And then it went on to WarCraft 3, where they, they attempted an auto-matchmaking system, where you had a level uh, based on how well you played. So say you were like level 50, and uh, it would match. It would try to match you against people who are similar, similar 
level. But I, my experience with that is that if you're level one, it's constantly matching you against like level forty people, which on like world on on Warcraft three is crazy. And then so they attempted that. It didn't work perfectly, but it was definitely it was pretty groundbreaking. Then it went on to World of Warcraft with uh, arenas, which I followed arenas really closely for a long time, and wow. And they have constantly changed the matchmaking system on WoW arenas, and then um, it got better and better, I think. There, there's a lot of opinions about that, but anyways. And then when StarCraft II came out, it seemed like they took everything they've learned to put it into StarCraft II. And the StarCraft II matchmaking system, I th- I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I'm, I, so far, it's been, it's been pretty good. I think it needs a couple of tweaks, but I, I'm really excited for their new matchmaking system. I'm, I'm hoping, as long as they can settle any ping issues, that people won't need to, to make their own private servers or anything like that.